Hey everybody, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Candy here of Candy's Hair Candy and more. How's everybody doing? It is Sunday, Father's Day 2019, and I am back, y'all, to give my review and commentary on games people play. We are on season one, episode eight. The title was A Wing and a Prayer. Woo, can y'all say woo? A wing and a prayer. That's what this episode was hanging on by, y'all. <laughs> so, if you are a first-time visitor to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by and taking a moment to rock with your girl. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome. And thank you so much for continuing to rock with your girl. All right, we're going to get right into our commentary on... Um, this past Tuesday's episode, I am a little late, y'all, and I am so trying to do so much better, but I be so busy during the week with work and then coming home and getting to doing stuff around the house and other things, and it just gets behind me, so um, please forgive me. All right, y'all, and I'm really working on getting better with that, at least trying to get these out within a day or two. Um, there's another new show getting ready to start up on the OWN Network um, with Robin Gibbons and a few other stars. I believe it's called Ambitions, and it looked like it's going to be good, y'all. So um, that's going to be coming on, on Tuesday nights as well, which is the same night that games people play and the have and have nots come on. And so I got to figure out a way to work all this in, being that a sister work full time. <laughs> So, um, yeah, let's jump right in, y'all. And, oh, if y'all see me glancing off, I'm just looking at notes because I be writing down notes. Like, I'll watch the series and then I'll watch it again and just kind of take notes because when I come on here, I don't want to leave nothing out for people that may have not a caught the show and you're just tuning into my channel to get the cliff notes. All right? So, basically, um, this episode began with Jamal's old school lime green Buick Regal cruising through the hood where we heard faint screams of help and banging coming from the trunk. Okay, now remember when last week's episode ended, um, Golden Goddess had contacted Nia and they were supposed to meet up at Nia's place and they showed Nia basically tidying up in her place and somebody knocked at the door and she was like come in and they showed somebody arm reaching around a corner snatching her up and throwing her in the trunk so i don't know if y'all are like me i assumed it was the african dudes that her and her homegirl suzy q suzy q had jacked when they went on that last little gig for roxanne well lo and behold it was jamal scheming tail now, last time I couldn't remember his name. That's the boy who low-key be messing with Kareem's mama, Jamal. He done picked her up. And I guess it's one of his schemes. You know, he's always trying to scheme on Marcus and Vanessa's fame. He some kind of way feels like Kareem should have been the one and he thinks he's doing it in his favor, but it's really kind of crazy and far-fetched. So that's where the season began. Um, I'm sorry, the season. The episode, y'all. Forgive me, I'm jumping around. Next, they show us the King Mansion. Um, tensions are high there with Vanessa and Marcus, okay? The paparazzi presence is still thick there. Um... The two of them are kind of not in the best space with one another. And during this time, the two basketball wives, um, Ginger and Jackie, which I believe that's one of Reverend Run's daughters, um, one of the Simmons girls, they come popping up with some bogus contract trying to insist that Vanessa sign. They claim that some investors have gotten together and want to make an offer on the winery. Okay, being that Vanessa P. Game and is not stuck on stupid and went to law school, she was like, okay, are we selling? And they're like, oh, just sign, just sign. It's $10 million on the table. You know, when all this blows over, you want to be okay for yourself. And she's like, uh, 
don't try me. I went to law school. I'm going to take some time and look this over and I'll get back at you. Okay. Boom. That was that. So I'm glad, you know, she was able to really read between the lines and peep game that something wasn't right about them being so persistent on her signing this contract on this alleged sale of the winery. Because she's like, we're selling? You know, they never even mentioned that to her. Next, we see Nia and MJ at Nia's office where Nia is frantically trying to figure out why Golden Goddess, a.k.a. Layla, stood her up that morning. Okay, she's trying to figure out what's going on. She's been trying to reach her by phone. Um, and she also shares with MJ that she got the time of death from Terrence. Remember, that's her ex-boyfriend, the cop. That um, she got the time of death on Kalinda Walter's murder. And it just so happens to coincide with the time of the fight based on the surveillance video with Vanessa at the hotel. Okay. Terrence also just so happens to call at that particular moment and inform her that Detective Loomis had recently went out to go speak with a talent uh, manager. And before he could even finish his sentence, Nia was like, Roxanne, and he was like, yeah, I see you've been doing your research. And she's like, well, not only that, it's just that Layla shared with me that she feels like she somehow connected because Kalinda, her friend that has recently gone missing, and herself all worked for her. And she just feels like somehow this is all tied to her. Well, Terrence shares that he went over to go make a pop-up and, you know, basically re-question Roxanne and that her whole apartment and her office was completely cleared out. So she bounced. She got the hell out of Dodge. You know, she felt the heat coming down and she bounced. Okay. Golden Goddess, um, Golden Goddess manages, I'm sorry, I'm flashing back to the warehouse now. The warehouse where Jamal took um, Golden Goddess in the trunk. Mind you, she doesn't know who's kidnapped her. She's assuming it's the Africans as well. She somehow manages to knock out one of the taillights on the old school Rigo. And just as she's doing that, he comes walking in and he lets her out of the trunk, complaining about how much that's going to set him back. Okay, he informs her that he is not going to hurt her. He just needs to use her to get at Marcus as part of another one of his blackmail schemes. He tells her, you know, that if she plays her part, he'll, he'll break her off. He takes pics of her tied up and, you know, bound and gagged. And he sends them to Marcus. He had a burner phone. Um, they didn't get no response, okay? So he's sitting around there tripping. Um, they flash back to the King residence where Vanessa's lawyer, homeboy who she had the affair with, I can't remember his name, he puts her on game that the board of directors making the offer on the winery um, had some other name of people other than what was in the contract. And he told her that he had to do some digging and he found the board of directors website and he said, check your email, I sent it to you. Lo and behold, when this girl pulls up her email, why is it the two basketball wives, Jackie and Ginger on the board of directors website? So basically she peeps game right there, okay, they were coming over here trying to front like they was trying to look out for me, but basically they're trying to move me out because of all this heat. Okay. Flashing forward, Marcus is in like another room while she's on the phone talking to the lawyer. He's in another room getting worked out by a new female masseuse. She's like, I told that boy not no damn female masseuse. I can't remember that girl's name, but she's one of them um, two sisters from Real Basketball Wives on Love, Love and Hip Hop on VH1. She's the one that is going through the messy divorce situation with um, the one pro basketball player. I cannot think of her name. But anyway, she's starring as the masseuse. She's getting all into the massage, rubbing her hands all up his shorts and, 
you know, picking him, asking him 20,000 questions, telling him she's seen what's going on with him on the news. Your wife looks a little stressed today. You know, I can work this out for you. Um, and then she starts mentioning stuff about the case and about Kalinda and it freaks Marcus out and he jumps up off the table and tells her look the team will make sure you get paid but please show yourself out okay next Jamal we get back to them in the warehouse Jamal is explaining to Gigi that since Marcus has all this heat on him that basically he feels like he would be willing to pay the ransom for another one of his side pieces to not go missing. Okay, so he's basically trying to bring her into the scheme and his big bright idea. He's really just trying to do all this to get some money because he wants to open a dang on wing and ding franchise. Okay, and he is asking for like $300,000 for her safe return. Back at the King's residence, Kareem shows up while Marcus is swimming a few laps in the pool. Marcus tells him that, you know, the cops knew about Kalinda being pregnant. They discussed the fact that Kareem had got the money from Marcus to give to Kalinda and Kalinda was supposedly supposed to have basically aborted the baby. Okay, well... Obviously, she never terminated the pregnancy. You know how these side pieces do these pro basketball players. She was going to keep that baby. That was going to be her bread and butter to keep getting money out of him for at least the next 18 years. Okay. When Vanessa comes walking out to the swimming pool area, Kareem makes a expeditiously speedy exit, running off. At that very moment, a text comes through to Marcus's phone. Being that Marcus is still in the pool, Vanessa grabs the phone and she actually sees the picture of a bound and gagged golden goddess, a.k.a. Layla, asking for the ransom money. So she's pissed the F off, okay? She's like, I don't give a damn. You're not paying any money. Because Marcus is just like, we got to do, we got to send him the money. We, we can't have no more heat. And she's like, you're not sending him a damn thing. So... They flash back to the warehouse. Gigi tells Jamal that he should send the text directly to Vanessa since Marcus was not responding. Like I said, it turned out that he's doing all this basically trying to blackmail him so he can get some money to open up a dang wing and ding franchise. As predicted, Vanessa's crazy behind takes the bait. She, she texts Nia and she sneaks out of her house past the paparazzi and she has Nia come look like she's sitting in like an alleyway behind her house and she comes running out with a hoodie on trying to be in disguise but the paparazzi is hot on her tail. She hops in the car with Nia and they ride out. Nia not realizing that Vanessa is actually making her complicit by taking her to make the ransom drop. The only problem is is that Vanessa believes that Golden Goddess is behind this whole thing. She's not even realizing there's another individual behind it, um, i.e. Jamal. She feels like it's just Golden Goddess trying to get over on them, scamming from day one. So she feels like this is a setup. Um, Kareem and Marcus also discuss it. Marcus is livid. He's like, who else did you tell about golden goddess and he's like what are you talking about i didn't tell nobody he's like did you tell jamal and he's like why well, i might have slipped and mentioned it to him so he's pissed he storms upstairs to the safe to go looking for his pistol and lo and behold his pistol is gone okay kareem is like look i'm not with this you a pro ball player and you got a gun you trying to get guns involved in things man you dumb i'm out i don't want nothing to do with this okay Nia and Vanessa, they're riding down the street. Vanessa is trying to fill Nia in on the latest shenanigans that are going on with this whole ransom request and blah, say, blah. And she flashes the gun. Nia's like, are you crazy? Vanessa claims she plans to pay the ransom drop, but 
she still brought the gun for protection. She believes this golden goddess. She's telling her to contact Terrence so that he can be there to arrest her and that she would get the exclusive on the story. This is what Vanessa's trying to sell to her. Nia tries to tell Vanessa that she feels there's more going on with Gigi, which of course pisses Vanessa off because she's supposed to be her best friend and she's defending the side piece. At the drop point, Jamal is staging the scene. He's trying to chain Golden Goddess up to the little fence there. And she's, you know, kind of done got him comfortable with her, you know, as far as telling her to contact Vanessa, this, that, and the other. So he's let his guard down a bit with her. She tells him that the cuffs is a little tight. Could he make them a little looser? And he's like, oh, yeah, is that better? So he's um, putting her up on the fence and he goes to walk back to the car for something. And he says something to her and he turns around and Layla done made a break. She is booking it down the street. OK, Jamal starts to cruise around the, the corners in the hood looking for her. And he spots her. He hops out in a flip pursuit entails. OK, she runs down an alley. Look like some businesses, maybe some restaurants. There's a guy out there dumping the trash and he sees them running towards him and he does what anybody would have did. I know I would have did it. He runs back in the building and closes the door just as she got to the door and Jamal was closing in on her. She was crying and begging and pleading and bamming on that door for him to open the door. And at the very last second, he opened the door real quick and let her in and closed it back just as Jamal got to the door and was bamming on the door. Just then, Nia and Vanessa are in the car. They show them again. Nia gets a call. Vanessa automatically assumes it's Terrence calling her back. She's like, okay, calm down. Where are you? Okay, I'll be there in just a minute. And she's like, what are you talking about? She's like, we got to make a stop. She's like, are you crazy? If we don't get this money to this drop point, they're talking about going public with this whole thing in 20 minutes. And she's like, trust me. This is for your own good. We got to make a quick stop. Next thing you know, they roll out. Nia pulls somewhere and parks in a battered and dirty, out of breath, disheveled golden goddess hops in the back seat of the car with Nia and Vanessa. And as you all know, this is where the episode ends. So y'all, this show is crazy. It is good. It is entertaining and it is getting heated. Drop down in the comments. Let me know what y'all thought. Let me know if I missed anything and let me know what you guys think is going to happen on the next episode. Until then, I will talk with you all later. Thank you again for stopping by and you all have a wonderful evening. All right. Bye.